Hi folks, this time we're going to talk about group 17 on the periodic table, which are the halogens. We've been talking reactivity trends, and now we're going to start talking about the nonmetals. The nonmetals are this upper left-hand corner. We were just talking about the inert gases, the noble gases, but now we're going to get into those nonmetals that are really, really reactive. And the halogens are the most reactive nonmetal family. Watch out as a student for words like the most, because boy, those are easy for instructors to turn into quiz questions and test questions. So the most reactive non-metallic family on the periodic table are group 17, the halogens. This is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. All of these are really corrosive in their pure form. Um, they react a lot. Um, all of them are good bleaches. I love this collection of pictures because it gives you an idea of what they really look like. Both fluorine and chlorine, if you could find them in a pure form, and you certainly wouldn't want to expose yourself to them because they would chemically react with your nose and your mouth and your bronchial system and do an awful lot of damage to you. Um, kind of yellowish green gases in in at room temperature. Um, bromine is kind of a pretty brownish red liquid gas depending exactly on the temperature of your room. Iodine is cool. It is sort of a silver solid at room temperature but you add a, a little bit of heat to it. You warm it with a flame and it gives off these absolutely scrumptious beautiful purple vapors. And then you come down to the bottom of the halogens, astatine. And astatine is highly radioactive, uh, very, very unstable compound, so unstable that its atomic mass is a whole number. Why is it a whole number? Because it's very hard to measure its mass. It's constantly decomposing. It's chemically re um, very reactive. It's radioactively very reactive. So uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time with astatine. It's just cool stuff, but you don't want to play with it. It's kind of nasty. So halogens are so chemically reactive that they are all good bleaches. You might be familiar with chlorine bleach. I'm sure you are. But the thing that makes them good bleaches also makes them excellent at killing germs. Because they're chemically reactive, that means they're never going to be found in nature in their pure state. They want to bond with other things in order to be stable elements or stable atoms. So that means these guys are going to be all over the place in lots of different things. Now the word halogen means salt former. Now when you and I think of salt, when I think of salt, I think of sodium chloride, the stuff you put on french fries. Um, but in chemistry, the word salt has a broader meaning. It doesn't mean just one kind of salt. It means a broad class of chemicals where a metal is bonded to a non-metal. And in future weeks, we're going to start talking about how that bonding occurs. But a salt is a big group of things. Um, here are other examples of salt. Calcium chloride, which is an aquarium supplement that you can put in there to make sure you're your fish are in good shape. Iron oxide rust is also an example of a salt. Now, you might not think of rust as salt. I mean, you're not going to put that on your food. But from a chemical standpoint, from a chemist example of something that is a salt, a metal bonded to a non-metal, ionically bonded, yes, it is an example of a salt. These things are crystalline solids. Remember in the past we talked about solids, liquids, and gases, and a chemistry um, definition of a solid is a crystalline solid with a three-dimensional crystalline structure. All of these things tick that box and follow that pattern. Long ago, chemists believed that all salts contained a halogen. Well, that is not true. Iron is, um, chlor chlorine happens to be a halogen and is in table salt and, and this aquarium supplement, calcium chloride, but oxygen is not a halogen. So the name stuck even when we found out more, uh, the name salt stuck, 
and the group 17 as halogens stuck, but it happens. You know, sometimes the name sticks. You, you might name your little brother Pee Wee when he's three foot high and now he's seven foot tall. It happens. Things change with time. Group 17, the most reactive nonmetal in the bunch is the one in that upper left-hand corner, and that is fluorine. It is the most reactive non-metal. So put a star by that, something you really want to know. Um, hydrofluoric acid, if you mix just hydrogen and fluorine together, you get this really strong, strong acid that actually will eat through glass. Uh, glass is very inert stuff. We keep everything from sulfuric acid to pickles in glass because it just doesn't react with things. Well, hydrofluoric acid mixed with this very reactive fluorine will just etch it, will we'll eat the surface away. Um, that's a great example of how reactive fluorine is. Fluorine in fluoride toothpaste is stannous fluoride. It is tin mixed with fluorine. And this was discovered by accident long ago and far away that stannous fluoride actually helps remineralize. It's so reactive that it will pull minerals into your teeth, remineralization of early tooth decay and make your teeth stronger, which is pretty nifty stuff. Here's a picture of fluorine gas in a little enclosed vial, that kind of lovely yellowish green gas. And this is a fluorite mineral. Fluorite in a mineral form that you might find in the ground is a really pretty purple crystal. Very often um, that is not its pure form. It's mixed with other things. Uh, this picture here is someone is etching glass you can actually buy hydrofluoric acid in a spray can. That kind of scares me, actually, um, if you want to etch glass at home. As you go down the halogens, you got fluorine is the top. The next one down is chlorine. Chlorine you're familiar with from chlorine bleach. Now, chlorine bleach is an excellent bleach. So what that means is two things. One, it's great at killing germs. We use bleach to disinfect everything from kids' toys in daycare centers to public pools, to private pools, to bath, public bathrooms, um, all sorts of things. If you run a kill big nasties, chlorine's going to do it. Why? Because it is so chemically reactive. It's going to take the little bacteria and the fungus and all of those things, and it's going to react with those microscopic little microbes and it's going to tear their little bodies apart. It's chemically, so it's nasty, nasty stuff. That's also why you want to wear gloves when you work with it, because it will chemically react with your hands. Um, whole water supplies in cities, they very often are going to use a bleach compound, probably all the time, use a bleach compound to disinfect it to make sure it is in good shape before they put it back out as drinking water. Excuse me. Chemical weapons, World War I, World War II, chlorine gas, nasty things, chlorine gas mixed with other things because in a gaseous form, highly reactive and highly dangerous. Now, the other thing we are aware of besides good germ killer is good bleach. Now, that means that it will pull colors out of clothing. And I'm sure I'm not the only one here who has accidentally spilled bleach where I didn't want to in the laundry and uh, gotten white spots. This is artfully done. When I do it, it doesn't look that good. You go down the halogen group under fluorine and chlorine, there's bromine and iodine. Now for non-metals, as you go down, they get less reactive. So fluorine here is dangerous, nasty, highly reactive stuff. Chlorine we put in our pools and we use to disinfect things. But by the time you get to bromine, this is less reactive. So what do we use it for? We still use it as a disinfectant, but people use it in their private pools and their hot tubs. Why? Well, you can control who goes in your pool and your hot tub. And sometimes you don't want your skin kind of burned off with all of the strong chlorination. Um, bromine is also back, especially in black and white film. Silver bromide was used in that old black and white film to 
create the image. Iodine, as you go further down that periodic table, less reactive still. Iodine is a good disinfectant, as all of the halogens are, but now it is benign enough, gentle enough, that we can actually put it on our skin. Iodine mixed with alcohol is called tincture of iodine. If you've ever had surgery, it's still commonly used in the medical profession. Um, it comes out as kind of a brownish liquid, and uh, that's very, very common in medicine. Iodized salt. People need iodine in their diet, and so a little bit of sodium chloride is mixed in with a little bit of sodium iodide. Tiny little amounts of it, but if you, un unless you are allergic to iodine or your doctor has said do not have any iodine, iodized salt is a good thing to use so you get that small amount of iodine in your diet because that is essential. So bromine, as I mentioned, brownish liquid. When it vaporizes, you get this lovely brownish color iodine, beautiful purplish colors as it vaporizes. So, so most reactive nonmetal is fluorine, less reactive as you go down, and astatine is just radioactive. We're not going to deal with it. So the next time we come back, we're going to go this direction, and we're going to start talking about some of these less reactive, still non-metallic elements. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>